next one's the looking at the structure of DNA. So I've got a nice long piece of string here. This is my model of DNA. It's two metres long, and that's actually the amount of DNA that's in each cell of your body. But in a cell, which is absolutely minuscule, something that you can't see, they need to squash this two metre length of DNA down. So this is called uh, DNA packing. DNA forms a structure called chromatin. DNA wraps around proteins called histones. So it's a four by four thing and your DNA wraps around twice and that forms a 10 nanometer fibre. That then coiled up even more and then starts forming loops. But they'd bend even more and then you end up with these coiling even more and that forms your chromosomes. So DNA is really tightly packed into the nucleus because well, it has to be. They say that if you got all the DNA in your body and stretched it all out, then it could go around the solar system, which is pretty cool. Lovely DNA. Okay. Okay, so DNA forms a double-stranded helix, and each strand is formed from nucleotides. So this is your general structure of a nucleotide. You've got your phosphate group, your nitrogenous base and then your um, deoxyribose sugar. And this is your phospho phosphate sugar backbone. Okay, so that's your general structure. So say this is one strand, this is our other strand of DNA. There is a direction. And we always say that DNA runs in the five prime to three prime direction. So this one, five prime to three prime is going this way. And this one, five prime to three prime. It's going this way, anti-parallel. But what does that mean? So, you can see here in our actual nucleotide, so this would be carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, carbon four, and carbon five. So the oxygen on this, the OH group, the hydroxy group, on this bit is on the three prime carbon. We just say prime because means we can label these bits differently. So this OH is on the three prime carbon. Now the second OH is bonded to this phosphate group, so that's a phosphate phosphoester bond. You could also count as that OH. So this OH is five prime because it's closest to the five prime to the carbon five. So one chain is running this way, three prime at one end and five prime at the other and the other chain is running in the opposite direction, like this. Three prime at that end, and five prime at this end. It's always nice to remember why that is, and it's just because it's carbon three here, and carbon five up there. And DNA, it's really important because in DNA synthesis, or DNA replication, new nucleotides can only be added to the three prime end, to this end. So DNA chains always grow in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. More of that in another video. So what about your bases, A, T, G and C, which are always talked about the letters? Well, uh, probably as you know, A always binds with T and it forms two hydrogen bonds, and G always binds with C, which forms three hydrogen bonds. So we've got A and G, T and C. We can arrange this to see how this works. Let's just move them together like that. And you can see we have a hydrogen bond forming between the hydrogen on this nitrogen and that oxygen on thymine. And then this nitrogen and that hydrogen there. Then, but if we have um, ugh, uh, cytosine in its place, so it'd be in that position these aren't going to bind because you can't form hydrogen bonds between the two hydrogens and these aren't going to have any interaction so that's just not going to work out so that's why A binds with T. Now G similarly binds with C and it forms two hydrogen bonds. You can see that they really nicely fit together, made for each other. So hopefully by this drawing you can tell what I mean by DNA being first double-stranded and secondly a right-handed helix. So double stranded so this would be one strand this would be the other so one end will be five prime and three prime uh, five prime and three prime like that and you have complementary base pairs forming 
like this between and each turn of the helix has about 10 base pairs uh, so it's an alpha helix, uh, right handed so if you put your right hand like this and stick your thumb up the chain goes, the coils sort of go in the direction of these fingers whereas if it was left handed they go in the other direction so hopefully you can see the chain goes around like that so this is B DNA you can also get A DNA which is really squat and like squashed up like this or you can get Z DNA which is just kind of weird and only comes in synthetic varieties and that's actually like left handed but the only sort of biologically significant one that people know about well that think are biologically significant is this which is the B form that you do not need to know this later on but I think it's pretty cool and so throughout the genome uh, DNA is always a double helix and like I said with histones they wrap around histones and different regions will be packed to a different extent so where you've got genes which need to be uh, transcribed there'll be a more open structure so less tightly coiled so that proteins can come in, bind and transcribe whereas in areas, and that kind of DNA is called euchromatin so it's a slightly looser, looser packed structure you also get heterochrom heterochromatin, which is like sort of what I showed you before, where it's all really tightly packed, and you think if your DNA is wrapped around like this, and then wrapped around like this, and then those bits are wrapped around up and like this, it's very hard for proteins to get in and bind to a bit of DNA to transcribe it. So in areas where the genome isn't transcribed, it's called heterochromatin, and it's in this more compact structure. Also, hopefully, what you can see from this diagram is that DNA has a major groove and a minor groove. So as you go up this way, there's a bigger gap here than there is here. Yeah, because my baby fit of things in there. And that's important when you go into DNA transcription and translation. Well, not translation, but DNA transcription. Because DNA binding proteins will bind to different sites depending on whether they're the major groove or the minor groove. So DNA looks different to proteins from each sort of direction. Which is very cool. I think that's all you need to know about DNA structure. Um, great.